My name is Javier Pinier Bars, and I'm hematology, oncologist, and the head of the lymphoma section of the Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida. Today, I'm going to present information about Bendeca, bendamastin hydrochloride, and a case study about a patient with indolent non-Hodgkin lymphoma. This promotional program was developed by Teva Pharmaceuticals, and I'm presenting on behalf of Teva. I have received compensation from Teva to make this presentation. The information I will be presenting is consistent with the full prescribing information for Bendeca and their applicable Food and Drug Administration regulations. Please see full prescribing information from Bendeca available at this site. To begin this presentation, we will review the indication and some important safety information for Bendeca. Bendeca bendamustine hydrochloride injection. Important safety information for HCPs. Indications. Bendeca is indicated for the treatment of patients with indolent B-cell non-Hodgkin lymphoma, NHL, that has progressed during or within six months of treatment with rituximab or a rituximab-containing regimen. Important safety information. Contraindication. Bendeca is contraindicated in patients with a known hypersensitivity, anaphylactic and anaphylactoid reactions to bendamustine, polyethylene glycol 400, propylene glycol, or monothioglycerol. Myelosuppression. Bendamustine hydrochloride caused severe myelosuppression, grade 3 to 4, in 98% of patients in the two NHL studies. Three patients, 2%, died from myelosuppression-related adverse reactions. Bendeca causes myelosuppression. Monitor leukocytes, platelets, hemoglobin, and neutrophils frequently. Myelosuppression may require dose delays and or subsequent dose reductions if recovery to the recommended values has not occurred by the first day of the next scheduled cycle. Infections Infection, including pneumonia, sepsis, septic shock, hepatitis, and death, has occurred. Patients with myelosuppression following treatment with Bendeca are more susceptible to infections. Patients treated with Bendeca are at risk for reactivation of infections, including but not limited to hepatitis B, cytomegalovirus, mycobacterium tuberculosis, and herpes zoster. Patients should undergo appropriate monitoring prophylaxis, and treatment measures prior to administration. Anaphylaxis and infusion reactions Infusion reactions to bendamustine hydrochloride have occurred commonly in clinical trials. Symptoms include fever, chills, pruritus, and rash. In rare instances, severe anaphylactic and anaphylactoid reactions have occurred, particularly in the second and subsequent cycles of therapy. Monitor clinically and discontinue drug for severe, grade 3 to 4, reactions. Ask patients about symptoms suggestive of infusion reactions after their first cycle of therapy. Consider measures to prevent severe reactions, including antihistamines, antipyretics, and corticosteroids in subsequent cycles in patients who have experienced grade 1 or 2 infusion reactions. Tumor lysis syndrome Tumor lysis syndrome associated with bendamustine hydrochloride has occurred. The onset tends to be within the first treatment cycle with bendamustine hydrochloride and without intervention may lead to acute renal failure and death. Preventive measures include vigorous hydration and close monitoring of blood chemistry, particularly potassium and uric acid levels. There may be an increased risk of severe skin toxicity when bendamustine hydrochloride and allopurinol are administered concomitantly. Now, moving on to the efficacy data. Bendamustine hydrochloride injection was a study in a single arm clinical trial in 100 patients with indolent B cell no Hodgkin lymphoma that had progressed during or within six months of treatment with rituximab or a rituximab containing regimen. Patient received 120 mg per meter square of bendamustine hydrochloride intravenously over 60 minutes on days 1 and 2 of a 21-day cycle for up to 8 cycles of treatment. 
Shown here are the inclusion criteria and baseline characteristics of patients in the study of bendamustine hydrochloride in indolent non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Patients were required to have experience relapse within six months of either the first dose, monotherapy of rituximab, or the last dose, maintenance regimen or combination therapy of rituximab. 97% of patients met these criteria. The median age of uh, these patients was 60 years old and 65% were male. The major tumor subtypes were follicular lymphoma at 62%, followed by diffuse small lymphocytic lymphoma at 21% and marginal zone lymphoma at 16%. In addition to prior treatment with rituximab, 99% of patients had received prior chemotherapy and 91% had received prior alkylator therapy. 97% of patients had relapsed within six months of either the first dose, monotherapy, or last dose, maintenance regimen or combination therapy of rituximab. As shown in this table, the overall response rate with bendamustine hydrochloride was 74%. The overall rate included 13% complete responses, 4% unconfirmed complete responses, and 57% partial responses. Responses were based on modified international working group response criteria, which specify that a patient meeting all criteria for CR, but with a persistently positive bone marrow test results would be scored as a partial response. The median duration of response among responding patients was 9.2 months. Before discussing our case study for this presentation, I would like to review some additional important safety information for Bendeca related to the skin reaction and hepatotoxicity. Skin reactions. Fatal and serious skin reactions have been reported with bendamustine hydrochloride and include toxic skin reactions, Stevens-Johnson syndrome, or SJS, toxic epidermal necrolysis, or TEN, and drug reaction with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms, or DRESS, bullous exanthema, and rash. Events occurred when bendamustine hydrochloride was given as a single agent and in combination with other anti-cancer agents or allopurinol. Where skin reactions occur, they may be progressive and increase in severity with further treatment. Monitor patients with skin reactions closely. If skin reactions are severe or progressive, withhold or discontinue Bendeca. Hepatotoxicity Fatal and serious cases of liver injury have been reported with bendamustine hydrochloride. Combination therapy, progressive disease, or reactivation of hepatitis B were confounding factors in some patients. Most cases were reported within the first three months of starting therapy. Monitor liver chemistry tests prior to and during Bendeca therapy. Other malignancies. There are reports of premalignant and malignant diseases that have developed in patients who have been treated with bendamustine hydrochloride, including myelodysplastic syndrome, myeloproliferative disorders, acute myeloid leukemia, and bronchial carcinoma. The association with bendamustine hydrochloride has not been determined. Extravasation injury. Bendamustine hydrochloride extravasations have been reported in post-marketing, resulting in hospitalizations from erythema, marked swelling, and pain. Assure good venous access prior to starting Bendeca infusion and monitor the intravenous infusion site for redness, swelling, pain, infection, and necrosis during and after administration of Bendeca. Now let's review a hypothetical patient with indolent Hodgkin lymphoma that may be representative of a patient in your practice. Our patient, Michael, is a 61-year-old man diagnosed six years ago with a stage three, grade one to two follicular lymphoma. He was initially watched closely and then treated with RTOP four years ago to bulky disease. The PET-CT scan show a complete response post-RTOP therapy a maintenance rituximab was administered 
for a total of two years. Michael's relevant medical history includes hypertension, dyslipidemia, and obesity. At follow-up, at five months of last rituximab therapy, Michael reports symptoms suggestive of a stage 3B disease. Nice sweats, two or more lymph nodes in both sides of the diaphragm. In addition, PET CT scan reveals diffuse adenopathy one to two centimeters below the diaphragm with a standardized uptake value of eight to 12. Lastly, Michael underwent lymph node biopsy confirming relapse of his disease without transformation. As seen in this slide, laboratory results for Michael show anemia with normal platelets and white blood cell counts. Both the lactate de dehydrogenase and beta-2 microglobulin levels are elevated. Clinical presentation of Michael include pelvic computed tomography scan that reveal bulky adenopathy in his left inguinal lymph node. I'm showing here the histological analysis of Michael lymph node biopsy confirms the presence of follicular lymphoma. Given Michael's disease staging, health status, and age, Bendeca would be a good treatment option for him. Michael began treatment with Bendeca injection, 120 milligrams per meter square, administered intravenously over 10 minutes on day one and two of a 21-day cycle for up to eight cycles. Now, to review the dose delays for Bendeca when used to treat indolent no Hodgkin lymphoma, for grade four hematological toxicity or clinically significant grade two or higher non-hematological toxicity, delay the dose of Bendeca. Once non-hematological toxicity has recovered to grade one or less and or the blood counts have improved to an absolute neutrophil counts, A and C of greater than or equal to one times 10 to the ninth per liter, and the platelet count is greater than or equal to 75 times 10 to the ninth per liter, reinitiate Bendeca and the discretion of treatment physician. Dose reduction may be warranted. Dose re-escalation may be considered in subsequent cycles. Here, you will see dose modification to address hematological and non-hematological toxicity. Please see the dosing consideration listed on this slide. Additional dosing consideration with the use of Endeca are shown here. Delayed treatment for grade four hematological toxicity or clinically significant grade two or greater non-hematological toxicity. Storbendeca recommended refrigerated storage condition, two to eight degrees Celsius, or 36 to 46 degrees Fahrenheit. When refrigerated, the contents may partially freeze. Allow the vial to reach room temperature, 15 to 30 degrees Celsius, or 59 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, prior to use. Dilute Bendeca injection prior to infusion. Concomitant sip 1A2 inducers of inhibitors have potential to affect the exposure of bendamustin. Finally, here we review more important safety information. Embryo fetal toxicity. Bendeca can cause fetal harm when administered to a pregnant woman. Conduct pregnancy testing prior to initiating treatment and advise pregnant women of the potential risk to a fetus. Advise females of reproductive potential to use an effective method of contraception during treatment with Bendeca and for at least six months after the final dose, and males with female partners of reproductive potential to use effective contraception for at least three months after the final dose. Bendeca may also impair fertility in males. Lactation. Advise patients that breastfeeding is not recommended during treatment with Bendeca and for at least one week after the last dose. Most common adverse reactions. Adverse reactions, frequency greater than 5% during infusion and within 24 hours post-infusion are nausea and fatigue. Most common adverse reactions for NHL, frequency greater than or equal to 15% are lymphopenia, leukopenia, anemia neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, nausea, fatigue, vomiting, diarrhea, 
pyrexia, constipation, anorexia, cough, headache, weight decreased, dyspnea, rash, and stomatitis. Please see full prescribing information for Vendeca. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoy the resources on this site. For more information about Vendeca, visit vendecaicp.com and please see full prescribing information available on this site.